My name is Melanie Coulson. I'm the Director of Content and Engagement at Canada 2020. Uh, thank you very much for being with us here this morning and thanks to those of you who are tweeting wildly. It's, it's fantastic trying to keep up with you and the discussion. Our next speaker is a healthcare professional with about 40 years experience. She's worked in three Canadian provinces and China. Uh, Anne Sutherland Bowl is, uh, has held a number of positions in academic healthcare settings, including staff nurse, patient care coordinator, director of nursing, vice president of nursing and programs, and chief operating officer. Of course, she's now the CEO of the Canadian Nurses Association. Throughout her career, Anne has been successful in carrying out innovative programs and effecting change. In the BC Health Ministry, where she was chief nurse, uh, nurse executive and an assistant to the deputy minister, and oversaw the implementation of the nurse practitioner role and the use of the baccalaureate degree as the entry to practice requirement for nurses. As chief operating officer at the Vancouver Coastal Health, uh, Vancouver Acute, and led the establishment of a collaborative practice model that more fully uses the skills and abilities of RNs, LPNs, and care aides. Please join me in welcoming Anne Sutherland Bull to the stage. So another boomer, needless to say. Anyways, I'm delighted to be here with you this morning to talk a little bit about nursing and uh, the contribution that we can make to innovation and health. And though my comments are going to be about nursing, the message I would clearly want to, stay, to make is that nurses are part of a team and that includes physicians, um, um, social workers, all the other professions, and of course, the patient and the family. So we've had a bit of a history of uh, trailblazing. Nurses have been trailblazers in Canada for over a century. Since the mid-19th century, Canadian nurses have been pro the primary care provider in rural and remote areas and in the north. Nurses have always been innovators, largely due to necessity, and early adopters of improved ways to deliver care, whether by dog sled or in helicopters. And today we continue to develop, we use the best evidence that we can, and that informs the approaches that we make to the care to serve our patients. So my intention today is to give you a snapshot of some of the roles that nurses are carrying out and the opportunities as we continue to innovate in our healthcare system. But first, a little bit about our, let's see if this works. Ah in terms of our statistics and who we are. So as you can see from this, um, the nursing professional group is the largest group of providers in the country. There's over about 300,000 registered nurses in Canada. We're baccalaureate educated and our practice of course is regulated by professional regulatory bodies. But if indeed you include licensed practical nurses, about 70,000, uh, registered psychiatric nurses in the western provinces of about 5,000 and our 5,000 nurse practitioners, it's almost 400,000 professionals. And that in addition to the 29,000 students that are taking nursing programs at any one time. So that's a real opportunity. At the same time, we have some challenges in the sense that um, we do not have all of our professionals working to full scope of practice, and there's still a large percentage of nurses that are not working full time in the system. So we have a huge investment that we as a society have made in terms of our nursing cohort, and we have an opportunity to maximally use them uh, beyond the current situation and status. So we've got great opportunities. Now we've heard be before that we need to really look at transformational change, innovation, shift the system from acute care to other models. And so I'm going to give you a couple of examples of where nurses have been able to contribute or lead in some of that conversation. <coughs> nurses have had a number of roles in diverse settings. Um, across the country, and the ones on the screens are just a few examples. Some are in hospital settings, but more and more are in communities and um, uh, settings in many different places throughout this particular country 
country. And as you know, we talk about the continuum of care. And so there are many places where care is provided and nurses are the most frequent people that are in all of those centers of care from coast to coast to coast. And as nurses, we have clinical skills, of course, but we also have the opportunity and the preparation to be good communicators, teachers, navigators, and be able to use technology. We've always had to use technology in our systems, and we're expert in that area. A couple of um, really exciting and fun examples to show you. So as we move the, the system from acute care to community to be able to meet the increasing needs, there's all sorts of wonderful examples. This one is one of my favorites. It was developed in Manitoba to deal with the population there. It's a mobile clinic that was conceived by nurses to serve rural communities around Winnipeg. It's staffed by a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse, and an administrator. It reaches patients that wouldn't be reached any other way. And this little team provides wound care, diabetes education, testing, the nurses prescribe medications, they can admit patients to hospital, and they can refer to specialists. And there are similar mobile models like this from across the country. On the previous slide, there was also a slide related to Insight, which is the safe injection site in Vancouver that I'm sure all of you in this room know about. And it's another example of nurses contributing to bringing care closer to where the patient is. It's a harm reduction strategy, as you know. It's a critical gateway to primary care, infection control, birth control, and recovery with reduced mortality and a real economic savings to the healthcare system in the, in the measure of about $20 million per year for patients in just one healthcare authority. And another group of nurses that are providing care closer to where patients live are street nurses in Vancouver in their downtown east side. These are nurses in their office is the street. They work there 24 seven providing care outside on the street to patients where they live. As we continue the transformation, we need to continue to think about moving beyond the episodic and urgent care to accessible services offered by Canadians where they live. And strategic investments in health promotion, illness prevention, results in savings across the continuum of care. And as Patty Mead was mentioning, I think one of the major barriers to moving forward on these innovative practices is the silos and having to actually move the money from one sector to another sector. Because we know where the innovation is happening. There are lots of great models, but actually transferring the cash from part A to part B is, is probably the biggest barrier that we in nursing see to moving forward in the transformation that we need. But we need to do it. And we need to invest more heavily in primary care and in the community setting. We know from a survey that the Public Health Agency of Canada did in 2012 that 55% of Canadians over the age of 12 are living with a chronic condition. And a chronic con condition and disease management, and, and clearly uh, we continue to add chronic conditions as we age, each one of us, they're not best served by the episodic management of care in, a, in an acute care facility. They are best supported by continuing care in a prevention model in the, in the community where nurses and others can contribute to supporting the patient as they live with this, this condition over years and decades. So one of the solutions that we have found successful in nursing is the implementation of the nurse practitioner role. And these individuals with advanced skills and preparation are well suited to managing patients with chronic conditions along a continuum of care in their communities, close to their families over years and decades. And research has shown that nurse practitioners offer high quality care, high patient satisfaction, improved access, and it is cost effective. You've been hearing a lot about home and community care. And 
community-based care. And we look forward to the investments that this federal government has promised related to increased capacity in terms of home care delivery. We know that this is what Canadians want by Nanos polling that has been done by us and others. We know that it, it saves the health care system a tremendous amount of money, and we know that nurses are well suited to provide this care. Nurses are foundational to the existing home care space, and home care and community care is being provided in a whole host of different environments, whether it's the patient's home, whether it's in long-term care facilities, community centers, the Y, support shopping centers, and schools. Nurses are there, and increased investment in the home care sector will absolutely help transform the system into something that is more sustainable and that gets the double, double word score of being something that patients and Canadians clearly want. Indigenous health is of course top of mind to all of us as Canadians and as nurses and it is an urgent priority and continues to be. Innovations in care and education related to providing additional supports for Indigenous communities will mean that fewer patients have to travel for their care, better outcomes, and better value for money. Nurses have been working in this space for decades and generations. Seven million Canadians live in rural and remote areas, and three million of those Canadians, and Patty Mead referenced that, three million of those Canadians, their primary or sole provider in care is a registered nurse or a nurse practitioner. So nurses know how to provide care in these communities. They've done it, they, they know how to do it, and by the opportunity to increase um, nurse practitioner roles, increase RNs working to expand its scope and the use of technology, we can only advance the care that this important population requires and deserves as, as, as being one of all Canadians. We talk a lot about models of care and uh, we do need to talk about new models of care and there's lots of great models of care. And we have continued to increase the variety and um, location of models of care across the country. And we know that different models of care that are community-based, that are focused on dealing with the community and the chronic conditions, is really a way of uh, managing sustainability now and in the future. And we know that our research has shown that these various team-based models of care are really the best place to uh, provide value for money. Nurses have been long involved in, in many of these models, some of which we are leading. We're certainly involved in family care teams, nurse, pra nurse practitioner-led clinics, multidisciplinary teams, and we're really interested and have had a number of conversations with Minister Philpott, who, as you know, is a, family, is a uh, family physician by background. And in her own family practice, her team includes herself as a physician, nurse practitioners, registered nurses, and paramedics. And so it's a fully integrated team that provides care to a population of patients under, under her area of responsibility. But as we look at various teams, we also need to look at uh, integration. And David Naylor, in his innovation report, talked about, yes, we need to look at um, uh, various models of care, but where we really need to contribute is helping people navigate through the system. And we heard a little bit about that this morning. It's very difficult for patients and families to go from one setting to another. So one of the areas that we've been really had the opportunity to expand on is the role of the nurse navigator. And the nurse navigators are involved in cancer care, they're involved in cardiac care, and there are those people that work with the patient that help them go from inpatient to outpatient to home care, back to inpatient if they wish uh, or needed, to be able to provide support to the family and caregivers. And it's a huge 
way and, and mechanism to really make sure that you are using your resources in the best way possible. And we know that where we've used nursing navigators, it clearly contributes to better patient outcomes for families, reduced readmission rates to emergency departments, and increased patient satisfaction to patients and families. So in terms of the future for nursing, what we're being looking at is really encouraging um, and working with our regulatory bodies and policy um, leaders to really move forward on maximizing the scope of practice that nurses, nurse practitioners, and the nursing family is able to do to maximally support the healthcare system. And this is one of the examples that we're currently working on to increase nurse prescribing for registered nurses. Many nurses are doing this across the country, certainly in rural and remote areas. We know it's safe. We know it has a, a good value for the for the patients and, and the communities. And so you'll see lots more work in this regard in the near future. So finally, as we look at um, the healthcare system from a nursing perspective, we believe that we have the resources in nursing. If we can look at expanding the roles that nurses currently have, that we combine technology with ingenuity, that we focus on continuing to the development of teams and increasing capacity in the community services, and really have the opportunity to incent some of those um, innovative practices that are currently in play in many places across the country. And nurses, we are well positioned and ready and able to be part of that future. Thank you very much.